Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. Well, this afternoon we're getting ready to make some stuffed peppers. And I'm making those because I got some really big ones at the farmer's market. I decided to go ahead, it got cooler, and I can keep stuff in the garage, so I got a whole bunch of stuff at the farmer's market yesterday. So what I got was um, a whole box of bananas. They're real beautiful yellow. And I got some Fuji apples, and that would be a whole uh, bushel. And I got 25 pounds of the Vidalia or sweet onions. I got, let's see, a box of oranges, and that would be a bushel of oranges. These are going to be the ones that have seeds in them because they're much sweeter and the, the peeling's thinner on them. I really like those. Uh, they told me they were Valencia, but I haven't tasted them yet, so I'm not sure they are Valencia, but I know they're sweet oranges. And of course, I got the peppers. Now, pepper like this in my Walmart was $1.20 each, so I figured out uh, my cost on them was about uh, 60 cents each, so they were half price, and they're beautiful uh, green peppers. Also, I got a 50-pound bag of red grade A number one red potatoes for $16, y'all. I wasn't going to get the stuff this year because, of course, we're planning to sell the house, but now we're hoping we don't sell it till the early spring. That would be best. Uh, I also got a great big box of uh, sweet potatoes from North Carolina, number one. Let me show you one. Hold on. Great big sweet potatoes. And so I'm going to make some of those today, too. And I went ahead and got a box of the uh, grade A number one uh, tomatoes. They came from Georgia, and they're vine ripened. And some of them have just barely turned red, so they'll keep for a pretty good while. And really, the last time we got those, we ate every one of them, and none of them went bad. So I'm hoping that'll be the same case this time. And I got the uh, uh, pineapple. When I got the bananas at the place, they call it the banana house at our farmer's market. And I also got uh, some of those really nice sweet pineapples. So I'm going to freeze those. I've already worked on some of them. But anyway, right now we're going to make the uh, uh, stuffed bell peppers. So what I've done is uh, cut them all in half the other way. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because they're so big and we don't want to eat Know, as much as it would take to stuff something like that. It's just too big. Uh, so anyway, the first thing I'm going to do, and these are going to be very, very simple. I mean, really, really simple. I'm going to shred uh, really a medium to large size onion, and I'm going to use my little shredder there. And I'm doing that because the I don't want to be eating a stuffed uh, pepper and get a piece of onion that's still crunchy because really everything that I put in this is already going to be cooked except the onion and so if I shred them I know that they'll go ahead and you know be cooked. Alright let me finish shredding this and we'll be right back. Alright we got the onion all shredded up. There we go. And I uh, earlier cooked a cup and a half of rice, that would be uh, the rice when it was dry, a cup and a half. I'm going to dump that in. And this morning earlier, I got up at 6.30 by the way, and I cooked four pounds of uh, ground chuck, and this is the 80-20. So I'm going to use half of that. I just eyeballing it and dumping half of it out. That'd be about it. So that'd be about two pounds of ground chuck. Now after I cooked it, I put it in a colander that was over a little bowl to drain the grease out. Also I'm going to use one can of diced tomatoes and I've drained those. So I drained them in a little bowl to get a lot of that uh, water out of them. Dump that in. And I'm going to add some salt. Right much salt because of the rice. 
and I'm going to add a little of Old Bay. And I'm going to add some onion powder just because I like the way it tastes. A whole bunch of that, maybe a tablespoon even. And then just a little bit of garlic powder. Now, I don't want to taste garlic in here, but I want that uh, to pipe in the taste of it. So now I'm just going to mix all this up along with the onions. It actually look, works better if I just put my hands down in there, and that's what I'm going to do. Get a little glove on here. Make sure that hamburger is kind of mashed up pretty good. Yeah, so we went shopping, farmer's market, had my teeth cleaned yesterday, and the day before I did all my major shopping for the month at Walmart and at Ballo, and I think I went to all these too. So we did a lot of shopping Monday and Tuesday. Mr. Bucky didn't get his teeth clean because he wasn't feeling well when he woke up. We're running a little bit of a temperature, but he's better now, so we had to cancel his appointment and make him another one for next week. So just pushing this all together. Now, I'm not going to put any egg, no breadcrumbs, nothing like that. It's just a real simple stuffed pepper. But it is important to uh, drain this uh, diced tomatoes because you don't want them just soggy. All right, so now I think we've got that mixed up pretty thoroughly. Already smells great. By the way, that I just love that ground chuck that you get at Walmart. It is so good. I don't know how they do that, but it's good. All right, I think we got everything pretty well mixed up. And I'm going to start stuffing these. Now, so the only thing that's raw is the uh, bell pepper and the onions. So I'm going to cook these at 375 degrees for about 45 minutes. All right, I'm going to stuff all these and we'll be right back. Okay, this worked out perfect for half of um, really six peppers, but they were the very large ones. So now I'm going to make just a little bit of sauce to go on, the same kind of sauce I make uh, to go on a meatloaf. So I'm going to use a big heaping tablespoon, it's really probably more like two tablespoons, of light brown sugar. I'm going to put some mustard in there, maybe a tablespoon. Also about a tablespoon of ketchup. A little more maybe and then a couple of squirts of teriyaki sauce just a little bit maybe a tablespoon or so and mix that up now I'm going to put a little bit of this on the top of each pepper and hopefully that will keep the rice that's in this mixture from getting too hard so just a little bit maybe a teaspoon or so, right on the top. Now, when these have cooked about 45 minutes, I'm going to uh, take them out of the oven and top them with some, uh, I'm actually gonna use Colby cheese this time, because that's what I've got. So just spread a little bit over the top. I hope I've got enough. Now, this is a really simple recipe. Now, the reason I'm fixing so many of these is because I'm going to freeze them. And I'll, what I'll do is uh, freeze two halves in a quart-sized freezing bag. And that way, we can have these at another time also. Now, the way I know that they freeze well, or the way I knew that they would freeze well, is Stouffer's makes stuffed peppers. Y'all probably bought some of those before. They're really good. But that lets me know that they freeze really well. So anything that you see in the freezer case at your grocery store, 
that's pre-made and frozen, if they did it, you can do it. You just have to figure out how. All right, so that'll give a little flavor and hopefully keep that rice from getting real brittle in the oven, I hope. Okay, that's it. We're gonna put them in the oven at uh, 375 degrees, and I'm just guessing at this now, but I'd say about 45 minutes, because all we're really doing is cooking the onions that are in there and cooking the uh, bell pepper. All right, we'll be back. Okay, the peppers are done, and I have shredded, this is Colby cheese, and uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit on the top of them. These did actually cook for about 50 minutes mainly because I forgot they were in there. So it cooked a little longer than 45 minutes. So we're going to put them back in the oven just enough to melt the cheese. That's all we want to do is just melt it. Now they smell good. They smell like meatloaf and bell peppers. All right, so while I was... Uh, waiting for these to get done. I went ahead and peeled and cut up the uh, sweet potatoes. And I'll show you how we're gonna fix those. All right, that ought to be enough. Some of these have got a little more than others. Don't want much on there, just enough to kind of cover it a little bit. to do it. Okay, we're going to put these back in the oven, but before we do, we put these aside because they're really, the pan's really hot. I have already uh, peeled the sweet potatoes. I think I had four really large sweet potatoes. And so what I'm going to do, I want them browned a little bit, and normally I would do this in the skillet, but I'm actually fixing more than I normally do because we will have them for several meals. So I cut them sort of in half and then cut them a little bit at an angle. So each piece is probably almost an inch thick. So I'll put a little oil on them. Now later we're gonna use some butter, but right now we're just using some oil. And I just wanna squish it all up and get them covered with the oil as much as possible. And we're gonna put these in the oven and we're gonna bake them at probably about 400 degrees because I want to get some brown on them. And once they get brown a little bit, I'm going to take them out and transfer them to a skillet with a little bit of fresh squeezed orange juice. Let me just put all of these in. And I'll uh, probably cook them, I'm just guessing now, maybe 30 minutes. And I'll check them because I don't want them too dark on one side and not on the other. Again, I'm going to do this at about 400 degrees. And I don't have any salt or anything on them but a little bit of oil. That's it. All right. Hold on. All right, so we're going to put these in the oven along with the uh, stuffed peppers. We're going to put those back in the oven. Oh, you couldn't see, could you? There they are. All right, and uh, we'll be back, and I'll show you what the... Um, peppers look like. We'll be back. Okay, here's what the peppers look like. Let me give you a little closer look. There they are. And so we're going to let these cool and all of them but two will be frozen in packs of two and then we'll, you know, just thaw them out when we uh, have another meal. And they do freeze very, very well, I can tell you. All right, I'm going to get the sweet potatoes in the oven and we'll be right back maybe in 45 minutes. All right, we are back, and the potatoes have browned in the oven. They're also pretty well done. So I've gotten a skillet over here, about five tablespoons of butter. I'm just heating that up, and I'm going to uh, put these potatoes in with the butter. I know. I'm just doing it. You know, sometimes when the uh, sweet potatoes are new, which is what these are, um, they don't brown quite as easily. So 
I'm going to get those off in there. Let me get my other spatula. Hold on. All right, I got my other spatula to be able to get these off of the uh, cookie sheet. And I might add, they're, they're, they're done, and they're a little bit brown. Now, if the potatoes were older, they would have browned even more, and more quickly, I might add. All right, so I've got my burner up on medium-high, at least to start out with. So what this is going to do is really concentrate the flavor of the sweet potatoes. Just like if you were baking them whole. Alright, that's it. Alright, now this skillet's going to get good and hot now. Let me move y'all closer. There. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put some salt on them. I didn't put salt on them before. Now, sweet potatoes do have to have salt because they are really bland if you don't use salt. So I've got about a half a cup of um, light brown sugar. And I'm going to put just a little bit of cinnamon. Not much because I don't want to really be able to taste the cinnamon. So that's probably not even half a teaspoon. And I'm going to also put just a couple of dashes of nutmeg. Hold on, I gotta cut my light on. There, that's better, right? Alright, so a couple of dashes of uh, nutmeg. So that was just nutmeg, cinnamon, and salt. I'm gonna stir that around a little bit now. What you see happening here is that butter is getting clarified. So you'll have more of a buttery taste. And there was a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan because I don't want the butter to burn. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over the sweet potatoes. Yeah, we're just going to let that caramelize for just a few minutes. And in the meantime, I have got some kale back in the back, some fresh kale. And I'm going to steam that for probably not but maybe five or six minutes. All right. After this uh, kind of caramelizes a little bit, we'll be back. Okay, we've got some caramelization going on down on the bottom of the pan. And what I'm going to do is dump in two cups. And I think that's about two cups. It might be a cup and three-fourths of fresh squeezed orange juice. up and sticking to the bottom. And now this sweet potato is going to soak up some of that uh, orange juice. Some of it uh, is going to evaporate and become more intense in flavor. So that's probably going to take maybe five or six minutes. We'll be back. Okay, we are ready to eat our uh, supper. This is the uh, stuffed bell pepper lightly steamed kale. That was for about five or six minutes. There are the sweet potatoes and all that orange juice soaks up in them. And got just a touch of cinnamon and a touch of nutmeg. And some of that really wonderful bread from Walmart that's got all those seeds and a little bit of garlic on it. So there you have it. And the uh, other uh, stuffed bell peppers are already in the freezer. Okay y'all, we will see y'all next time.